A shoe designed for the most elite caliber athletes in the world running marathons. Wait, what the heck? Ah, oh, hell no. So at $250, the Zoom Vaporfly 4% definitely is one of those shoes that people are talking about. Is it worth the price point? However, and how is the Zoom X cushioning in this shoe? I will discuss that in this video. What is going on guys? Hess here, collectivekicks.com, and I wanted to bring you guys a detailed look and review of the Zoom Vaporfly 4% and give you guys my thoughts and impressions of this shoe right here. I will do some pros and cons in this video, as well as a comparison to Adidas Boost and the Zoom Fly as well as the Vapor Max, as you can see in the backdrop. So I wanted to give you guys just kind of a, an all-inclusive sort of view into this shoe. So I'll start off with a little bit about the shoe, and then I'll get into the pros and cons, and then the comparison to the other technologies. And if you guys like this video, please hit that thumbs up and show your guys' support on this video. Uh, this shoe cost me $250. Nike did not send me this shoe. Adidas did not send me this shoe. Uh, so I'm just basically giving you guys my perspective of the shoe. And I know from the very, very beginning of this video, a lot of people are going to go ahead and let me know that these are not for me because these are a performance shoe. These are strictly for marathons. They're not for anything else. I get that. It is what it is at the end of the day. Originally, the Ultra Boost was dubbed the most comfortable running sneaker in the world in like 2015. Adidas actually marketed it as that. And then since then, we've obviously transformed this shoe and made this into a casual shoe. These are ultimately just a shoe that I wanted to try out because it does feature that new Zoom X cushioning system and I wanted to know how it felt on feet. So that is why I'm doing this video from a casual perspective, not from a running perspective. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some of the details. So this is the Ice Blue Bright Crimson and University Red Blue Fox colorway. These are designed for race day speed and it says it's Nike's most efficient and fastest marathon shoe to date. The Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4% provides superior responsiveness. And how does it do that? Newly designed ultra lightweight Zoom X midsole foam delivers the greatest energy return yet. This also features a full length carbon fiber plate in the midsole and that definitely gives you some springy return on that Zoom X as you end up transitioning from heel to toe. So the upper is actually a fly mesh upper and it's nearly seamless as you could see. There's no seams on the shoe except for right here. And it's designed to be more breathable for the 5Ks to the marathon runs. It's pretty cool if you look up close actually you could see that there's actually fibers that cross over every single one of these threads which is pretty awesome. The last detail you could see around the collar they ended up using a nice uh, material around the collar, so it's really, really soft. The shoe actually weighs 6.5 ounces in a men's size 10. Also on the sole, it has a durable rubber and heel protection against abrasions. As I mentioned to you guys in the unboxing, there's an elite version of these shoes that marathon runners were given to run to do the breaking two thing that Nike was all about, uh, breaking two hours in the marathon. So the reason why they're called the 4% is supposed to actually make you 4% faster, when you wear these shoes for your marathon runs. So I definitely understand this is a very high performance pair of sneakers. So if you guys wanna see a video of me wearing these after a month, leave a comment and let me know. I did a couple other videos like that, one for the Vapor Max, I did pretty well. And you know, the opinions can change on the shoe after you wear them for quite a bit. But I wanna give you guys my initial pros and cons of this shoe in this video. And let's go ahead and get into the pros first. So right out the gate, I will tell you that I've tried on hundreds of different Nike models through my lifetime. And this one by far, hands down, is the most comfortable Nike that I've ever put on my feet. That definitely is something to be said when you've tried on so many different models. So one of the reasons why this is the most comfortable shoe that I've tried on has to be because of the Zoom X technology. This is the first production shoe that actually features the Zoom X technology, which is why we end up seeing such a hefty price tag at $250. It's just such a lightweight foam plastic type material they definitely captured a lot of the responsiveness so that was one of the challenges of lunar lawn is it was lunar lawn foam on the outside but then it had a rubberized core to encase the foam because the lunar lawn just couldn't 
stand the test of time. So this Zoom X, I think that they are engineering this with the mindset of Lunar Lawn, but without that harder rubber counterpart that Lunar Lawn has had to have in the past. So this is kind of like an advanced Lunar Lawn in a sense. But the reason why I think that this is the most comfortable shoe is not because they found something that can be really, really cushiony. It's the fact that they paired it with the carbon fiber plate that is inside of this shoe. The fact that they have this carbon fiber plate in the midsole, it's a full length carbon fiber plate, definitely gives you that kind of heel toe transition. It kind of catapults you forward in a sense uh, because of the, the shape of the carbon fiber. And it's really significant in here. This shoe you cannot bend backwards because that carbon fiber plate is placed in the inside of here. So it's impossible to bend these shoes backwards because of that. Meanwhile, like, Adidas boosts, this is the difference here. The fact that you can bend this like this forward, forward is one thing, but backward is another. Uh, this, you can't do that. So that is definitely something different where they were able to take two different technologies, mesh them into one midsole. It doesn't look like anything fancy is going on right here, but this is like extremely well engineered for the fact that they were able to do that. And so kudos to Nike, super impressed with the shoe and what it has to offer with the new technology. As I mentioned, it does have a fly mesh upper, not a fly knit and not a mesh upper. Kind of interesting that they ended up doing this. It feels almost like engineered mesh and then it has these really large vents in the shoe. And because it does have this fly mesh, uh, weave pattern across the area. It actually is really really strong as well as the fact that it has the most ventilation possible I would say that the fit of these shoes are true to size I got a nine and a half I wear a nine and a half and these fit me well with socks or without the last thing I'll cover is a tongue definitely kind of an interesting lacing system You can see that it has an inner cage right here that actually reaches up and folds in and then you could see that it, it ends up being the laces for the shoe and they are reinforced a bit. And then you have the tongue that has a split on the top and then kind of just lays on top of your foot. All in all, the placement of the tongue is actually really good. It doesn't wiggle left and right like the Flyknit Racers when you actually have these locked down. So there's a lot of pros about this shoe to make this such a fantastic shoe, but there's definitely a couple cons that are very, very annoying, at least to myself. And I wanted to share those with you guys as well. So let's go ahead and get into them. So the first con I'm gonna start off with is definitely the price point. The fact that the shoe is $250 is outrageous. I understand it is a new technology. It does have a carbon fiber plate that you have no visibility to, uh, but the upper in itself is just like a mesh upper that they ended up using this fly mesh to. And the fly mesh, while it's nice, it's not really a reason to charge that much extra for the shoe. 225 tops is the price that these should have been, maybe 200. As I mentioned though, it is the first of the new technology with the Zoom X and that is part of the reason why the price point is so high. It's an early adopter fee for paying for something first, and, and I get that. But it is kind of a con because it is so darn expensive. Speaking of Zoom X, I'm gonna transition to the next con, and I think that the overall naming convention of Zoom X is just a huge fail. Why do you call it Zoom? I don't understand. It should be called Lunar Lawn X, if anything, because it's Lunar Lawn is the closest thing to this. If you don't know what Nike Zoom is, I did a video on that already. Zoom Air is a different technology in itself. Lunar Lawn is a different technology. So why would you call this Zoom X when it, the closest thing is Lunar Lawn, in my opinion? Lunar Lawn X would have made way more sense. They could have promoted it better. It would have been better branded. And I don't know, it would have been a smarter evolution of something instead of confusing the technologies. It's just like Microsoft going from the, the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One or whatever it was. It just, naming convention wise, it just made no sense. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. This is Zoom X and hopefully eventually people are going to understand what the technology is once these hit more of a mainstream audience. So the next con about this shoe is probably my biggest complaint about this shoe from my perspective. And that is this crazy weird suction cup action that they have going on right here. I'm gonna cut to me walking these so you can hear what happens. I honestly don't know how they didn't catch this in the design process, but this cup right here the reason why this is a pain in the ass because you can see it's like a, a dome. Every time you step 
on the back section here and pull up. It suction cups to the floor and then pops out. It kind of reminds me of one of those throwback 90s toys where you flip the rubber thing upside down and then you wait and then it pops up off of the ground. Again, I get it. If you're running on pavement or on concrete or whatever, it's not even gonna be a factor because there's gaps on the concrete or the pavement, so this won't suction cup down. But anytime you're walking on a flat surface, this definitely suctions down um, and makes a crazy amount of noise. Maybe my the compression because of my weight like makes that pop. Somebody leave a comment who owns these and let me know if they've actually experienced the same thing or if I'm just absolutely crazy. One of the things that I wanna mention, the Zoom Fly, which I'll compare to in just a second, doesn't have that problem because they were smart enough to curve it right here. And so it comes in and then curves up right here, but this one doesn't have that. And so I, I don't understand why they did that. Really, really big fail in my opinion. And one of the most annoying things about the shoe, hands down. So the other con that I will mention is that you really cannot wear these loose. You have to tighten these laces. And I know most people are like, well, duh, shoes are supposed to be tight. But I'd say 95% of my shoes I never lace or I do this type of lacing style where it's not snug and I don't have to tighten this down to my feet. You can't really do that with this shoe because if you do not have this tightened down enough, the shoe feels really unstable. Because it sits on this huge crazy amount of Zoom X, honestly feels a little bit unstable left to right uh, from the shoe to the point where you feel like you might fall over or roll over or fall out the boat. This shoe might not feel very stable to a lot of people anyway, even when you do lace those up. That was the solution that I found because originally I wore these loose in my video that you guys um, seen the on feet on and it definitely doesn't work. The other con about the shoe and I mentioned that in the Zoom Fly video as well is this whole thing right here, this widow's peak on the back. While it looks kind of cool aesthetically and I understand the reason why they put it in here is for the heel strike as you're running, as you're in your car just driving with this thing, this is not so dope. It ends up just getting scuffed up really, really easily because of the placement. So again, I know it's not made for driving. Usually people that are hardcore runners are gonna have somebody else drive them to the events or change shoes once they get there. But for anybody else that does drive, that is definitely something that sticks in the way. To be fair though, the 9317s did the same thing in these. You step down and it definitely gets scuffed up on the back section right here as well. So the last con I'll mention, it's not really a con for me, but a lot of you guys mentioned it as a con just visually from looking at the shoe, is the midsole wrinkles. The fact that the wrinkles on the midsole are so extreme, a lot of people are like, it's just gross to look at and nobody wants to see an old wrinkly shoe they like the idea that it's not like that but to be 100 percent fair do you want these weird bulbous like boost balls everywhere where it looks just like an infection gone wrong or something i mean it's the same sort of thing right technology has side effects this is one where they had the boost balls all like melted together in this case you're gonna have just wrinkles on the midsole this came wrinkled out of the box so it doesn't matter to me but it is something to mention that you guys have said so now that the cons are out of the way, I wanted to compare to a couple of the other shoes out here. So first I wanted to compare the Zoom Fly to this shoe right here because the Zoom Vapor Fly 4% looks pretty much the same as this shoe here. There's a couple main differences between these two. Obviously the biggest difference is this one features Zoom X while this one has a Lunar Lawn encasing, but up close it looks really similar. While this shoe is really, really light, this is just like insanely light. Comparison to the Ultra Boost, this one feels like a brick. So as you can see the soles look very similar also has lots of the same sort of patterns. This one protrudes out a little bit more than this one. This one's definitely more flush except for these crappy little pods right here that I've already mentioned that I hate. The sole looks a little bit heavier duty on the zoom flies than it does on the vapor flies. The overall collar and construction though looks pretty much exactly the same. The tongue and the placement look exactly the same. The upper looks fundamentally the same as well, except for this one does have that fly mesh. And all in all, it's like pretty much the same shoe. So is it worth paying the extra $100 for these at $250 versus these ones? I will tell you when I tried one shoe of each on and I walked around, there was no comparison. This shoe was hands down a way, way better shoe. Despite the looks, if you just closed your eyes and put both shoes on, you would easily tell that this is a more expensive version, even though it looks the same. That was the craziest part to me because I thought they would be so similar and they really aren't on feet. Is this a great shoe though? This is a really, really good shoe 
for the price point, but it's not a replacement for this shoe. If you want something that is more responsive and if you want something that has more cushion. So the big question a lot of you guys are gonna be asking, how is the comfort from the Ultra Boost comparison to this? And which would I choose if I had to choose just one of these shoes? Comfort comparison to the Ultra Boost, I will say this definitely has more of a cushiony feel. It definitely feels like you're on a pillow cloud. I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not for some reason, and I don't know if it's the 2017 production or what, but the Boost does not feel as responsive in some models as it does in others. This Zoom X though is crazy, crazy responsive. Now, I will say that the closest thing to compare is probably this shoe, not the Ultra Boost, because look at the sheer amount of volume of Boost versus the sheer amount of volume of this Zoom X. And when you compare that side to side, when you have more Boost, it's gonna be more uh, cloud-like feeling and more like cushiony. When you have more Zoom X on the shoe here, it's gonna be really cushiony. If you cut this Zoom X in half, it probably wouldn't be as responsive. So, and if you compare these two side by side, this shoe has significantly more boost than the Ultra Boost. So this is more of a cloud-like feel than the Ultra Boost. So comparing apples to apples, I guess, this would be the closest thing. The difference is the lightweightness of this shoe is just crazy light comparison to this. This is like super, super heavy. This is super light. Do I think it's better than Boost? I would say it's more responsive and lightweight. And because of that, some people might think that this is definitely better than what Boost has to offer. What I don't know is the durability of this comparison to Boost. Boost definitely is very, very durable. I can't say that this is very durable quite yet. So will it be over time? Who knows? But as of for right now, this is just extremely lightweight, extremely comfortable and responsive. So why would I even bring the VaporMax out here? It's interesting that Nike has paralleled different technologies like this. I mean, originally I did a review on this VaporMax and a lot of people said, oh, you're an idiot. That's a that's just a performance shoe. It's not made for you. You shouldn't be able to wear this shoe. And I did my review on this shoe. I complained about a lot of the things, including the squeaking of the shoe, but it's still a great shoe and it's one that I like to wear. And I like the overall look of the shoe, even though it's a hit and miss with most consumers. I like the upper and the fly knit upper that they chose. And then they went in a completely different direction. I mean, this is just the innovation of Nike in general. To me personally though, this VaporMax is super gimmicky comparison to the Zoom Vapor Fly. This is not as much of a gimmick just because it really is comfortable and it really does have a focus on heel toe transition with the carbon fiber plate and the breathability of the shoe. So I think it's pretty cool to see one company bring two to three different brand new technologies to the market. The other third technology that I haven't spoke about yet is um, the React technology. It's like a new cushioning technology that they're putting on lower tiered models. And I will have a video comparing React to this and this because they're all three technologies in 2017 that Nike has brought to the table. But this one, in my opinion, is definitely superior to the other ones at this point. Final thoughts about the shoe. It's definitely one of the most incredible shoes I've ever tried on my feet. You definitely have to lace them up, but once you do that, it feels more supportive and the cushioning and responsiveness to this shoe is definitely the craziest I've ever seen on any shoe. So I love the fact that Nike is bringing innovation. I knew this was gonna be the case once Adidas started dropping Boost like crazy and the steam started happening with Boost. I knew Nike would try to innovate something and I would say that personally, even from a casual perspective, this definitely has delivered. And I love the fact that I can say that, but that's all we have for the pro and con video for the Zoom Vaporfly 4%. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think about the shoe and if you have tried them or if you're interested in trying them, leave a comment, but I will put some links to be able to cop these if you guys are on the market. Eventually more pairs will drop. But thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna see other videos on my channel, check the playlist on the screen at this time and hit the thumbs up button if you guys liked the video. We will catch you guys for some more videos soon. Peace guys.